Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to CAN TV. My name is Susan Reina Guerrero. I'm President and CEO of Beacon Therapeutic. For the next 30 minutes, you'll be getting to enjoy a chat that I'm going to have with Kathy uh, regarding the great work the Taproot Foundation has done for Beacon. Uh, but a little bit of background on Beacon. We started in 1968 as a therapeutic day school, and since then we've evolved to a multi-service organization. We offer a myriad of programs located in four different locations. And essentially what we see ourselves doing is working with individuals and families who really had challenged and disadvantaged beginnings and providing new endings to their beginnings. Um, we have four different locations. I'm going to put that on the overhead. Uh, our administrative offices are at 1912 West 103rd. Our homeless services are located at 117th and Western. Our Calumet Park location is in Calumet Park on 124th and Ada. And our Longwood campus, which is we consider our main campus, is on Longwood Drive. We do offer a myriad of services and programs, and I'm going to list those. We have two therapeutic day schools. We have a shelter outreach services where we're providing mobile outreach services to homeless women and children throughout the city of Chicago. We offer a CHIP program which enrolls uh, homeless youth and children into Illinois' All Kids program. We offer Early Head Start. We have an innovative FACT project, Family Assertive Community Treatment, that works with young mothers and their children. We provide aggressive outreach for uh, vulnerable families in our homes program. We have a PATH program and then two day treatment programs for children ages 3 through 12 and then a traditional outpatient mental health clinic. Today I'll be talking to Kathy Valdeseri who is a brand and marketing strategy executive. Did I get that right? Yes. yes. Um, Kathy actually we were fortunate to meet Kathy through our Taproot Foundation grant. So welcome Kathy. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for having um, me. So for the next 30 minutes, uh, you'll be hearing us talk about the Tapper Foundation and <coughs> Kathy's great experience, but this is a live call-in show, so if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to call. The number is listed on your screen. The number is 312-738-1060. So Kathy, tell me a little bit about yourself. What is your background? My background is uh, my entire career in the marketing communication industry, uh, I think ad agencies, uh, consumer promotion agencies, those kinds of things, and, and my specific role is a strategist, and uh, you'll hear many different terms for that, but essentially what a strategist does is tries to look at the world under in a, through a different set of eyes with a specific goal of, of trying to move consumers to act, and I mean that literally, mm -hmm. it's to move them towards a transaction, and uh, also emotionally to try to, to connect to their heart and mind. So. Um, that's what I've done for a very long time, and it's uh, one of my great passions, and I had uh, the opportunity to do that uh, through the Taproot Foundation for Beacon. Well, and I know <coughs> the Taproot Foundation is, is a great organization, and, and I'm thinking of your skills and your expertise in bringing that to bear for the foundation. So to, obviously it's pro bono work. Correct. So what does that mean? <laughs> pro bono uh, is, uh, is an organization that provides professional services uh, to nonprofit organizations like Beacon, uh, and provide a business uh, business talent uh, professionals uh, to to give uh, counsel and consulting and to do the work in in areas like marketing and management and technology and design and areas where uh, a nonprofit organization doesn't really have the time or the, or the resources necessarily to do that kind of work. Uh, within their own organization. So Taproot provides those people uh, and their time to take on that kind of work. Yeah, I know that's, I know for <clears throat> our organization like Beacon, clearly this is not something we could afford to do and clearly we don't have the expertise. So how did you connect with the Taproot Foundation? I actually, um, it was rather by f uh, happenstance. Mm. I was online, I don't even remember what I was researching on Google and the Taproot Foundation came up and I think I was in the middle of the day and um, I thought, wow, this is very, very cool. I had been looking for some mm -hmm. kind of volunteer work, and uh, I had done mm -hmm. some some volunteer work uh, before, but this seemed really interesting because it was right uh, in the area that, that I have done for a very long time and have such a passion for. So I went online and I applied and went to an orientation and then uh, got a phone call and was assigned to a group, and I was fortunate enough to hook up with the Beacon Therapeutic group and and you and uh, your team and um, it's it was just a, a, I want to say almost a trans transformational experience for me because I 
didn't know anything about mm -hmm. Beacon, and uh, having gotten into it, uh, it is uh, it is a brilliant organization, and the work you do is is phenomenal. So. Thank you. That's very kind of you to say. I didn't realize this was your first project because you seem very, um, very at ease with the whole thing. Uh, at the same time, like you really knew th the work. Uh, and I think um, the information that the team gave was quite powerful. So this is the first time the whole team. Well, tell, tell me yes, a little bit about the team. So uh, there were four or five of us, actually. We have uh, each Taproot uh, team has an account director who then picks from the pool of talent. And the team is typically set up like that of a, an advertising agency or marketing communication mm -hmm. agency where there's the account person, the project manager, mm -hmm. uh, a strategist, a marketing manager, and, and, a, and a, someone from a creative background, whether it's a writer or a designer or a combination of both. And we work, you know, through the project and, and you know, set up timetables and we have certain deliverables that are, that are due. And, uh, I know we had weekly calls with with you and your team and uh, a couple presentations and we just uh, did this work on the weekends and at night and mm -hmm. whenever we found uh, a minute here and there and uh, what I loved about it was that it was it was mentally challenging uh, you know much more so than uh, you know um, you know building a, a home for <laughs> you know people or something like that so mm -hmm. it was it was it was much more of that that mental exercise well you'd mentioned volunteering before and t describe a little bit about your experience before versus this type of volunteer work I think the volunteer work I have done previously has been more physical labor oh, okay. uh, whether it was you know uh, working at a, at a um, shelter or mm -hmm. a, or a, a food kitchen or something like that um, so there's, there was a lot of physical labor, and, and this was just a lot of thinking uh, and researching. And, and uh, we did uh, several interviews with Beacon stakeholders mm -hmm. and found out a, a lot of great insight from them that, that helped us to put together the, the key messaging and the overall brand strategy, uh, you know, that ended with the tagline, uh, creating uh, new endings from, from disadvantaged, disadvantaged beginnings. beginnings. So, yeah. um, you know, we found a little bit of inspiration here and there, and, and uh, I think the the one piece of inspiration that that really struck us was a was a quote from a a woman who was a behavior a child psychologist and behavioral therapist from Scotland who said, you know, quote nobody can go back and start a new beginning, but anyone can start today and make a new ending. And so that was just that really brought everything together because I think you know there are a lot of uh, nonprofit organizations that help at risk and and homeless families um, on a temporary basis. But when we looked into the history of Beacon and we, and we saw the work that you do, we realized that, that the work that you do is absolutely transformational and it, and it takes uh, women and children where they are and you know, gives them the help that they need and the, and the, and the mental health services they need and for children the, you know, the education they need to really move them uh, into a new space in their lives, not only physically but you know, as a family. You know, and I think hearing you say that, I think it's so powerful to hear that because I know that's what we do, and I think th this is what's so helpful is that when you're in when you're in doing it, it's hard to step outside and and look at it objectively, and that's what I think you and the team did was really look at what we do on a, from a different lens, and that's what's so helpful for us to hear. And I love hearing you say that, so I'm glad it's recorded because then we'll be able to play it again over and over <laughs> again. Um, so I guess I'm just wondering, what is you know, you said it was transformational for yourself. Yes. How so? Because I want to be uh, uh, very involved in, in Beacon, if you'll have me, <laughs> yes, actually. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, our target was individual donors, and I could, you know, probably be the, the best flag carrier for that, having uh, worked with you and ha having seen what you've what uh, Beacon has done and, and the history and, and how Beacon started, you know, mm -hmm. as this, as this uh, small uh, school for children with special needs and how these parent these parents were were so had such a conviction for their mm -hmm. for taking care of their children and their education um, and I think because you know I come from an incredible family uh, my parents were just an unbelievable and you know there were f five of us uh, so that was I know really challenging for my mm -hmm. mother and father mm -hmm. and you know to to recall the the kind of you know care that they 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 took for us and and all that they gave us and um, to you know read about these these young women mm -hmm. and their and their children and you know you, if you step into their shoes for five minutes you, and and try to you know 
see what they're going through. I think it's it's when when you try to step in their shoes and even imagine uh, what their lives must be like that it just feels for it felt for me like I needed to do something and uh, I'm just so grateful that uh, I had this opportunity. Goodness, and I think um, clearly the feeling is mutual because I think again uh, the the knowledge and the the words and the framework from which you, you gave us and the team gave us really makes a difference in how we're going to go forward. And I think we described, you know, the reason why this keeps on living is that, you know, we were given this information and this instruction and this eye-opening kind of experience, and now it's reflected, and it'll keep on getting reflected in our grants and in our literature and all our collateral materials to really help people see what we do. And I think, you know, this is the benefit of, of getting volunteers to work and pro bono work, and it makes such a difference for non-for-profits such as ourselves. So do you see yourself continuing to do more uh, pro bono jobs as part of Taproot? Or? Oh, absolutely. I, c I can, uh, I'm really looking forward to the next one. But whatever, we're holding whatever, on to it. We still get you somehow. <laughs> <laughs> whatever that project may be, mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. Um, this feels like, you know, um, something that I can continue to go forward with and, and make my commitment to it for a very long time. Um, and, and I think because the industry that I am in has been so good mm -hmm. to me and has given me so many opportunities, this is such a great way to, to give back mm -hmm. um, and use my talents to help other people. It's something my dad has always, uh, always taught us, and, and my mother. So um, they sound pretty amazing. I know you were describing a little bit about earlier, about you know the history and the legacy of your family. So clearly, they they encouraged everybody to give back yes. and and to help others, which is so Absolutely. important. And I think we we've talked in the past to how challenge how much the times now are so challenging with people being able to give back, unable to give back, mm -hmm. I should say. But clearly, you have a unique skill that really can benefit, you know, can benefit so many. Now, I understand the Taproot Foundation is also, it's national, right? Or there's other Correct. offices? So where's so, some of the other so offices? So there's the Chicago office. There's an office in San Francisco, uh, an office in Washington, D.C., and I believe New York. Mm -hmm. So I think that there are four or five offices around the country that do similar work. Um, and what are some of the other expertise uh, volunteers or some other experts that are part of the foundation? So clearly you described your expertise. Right, which is marketing and spe more specifically brand strategy. Uh, there is, a, there is uh, an opportunity to have web design done if mm -hmm. you're if a nonprofit, uh, management, strategic planning. So if you're looking uh, mm -hmm. at a, a five-year plan and really you know, are, don't have the time to do that or, or you know, need some more uh, expert resources, Taproot will put a team together mm -hmm. um, to help you uh, move that along. Mm -hmm. And I think those, are, and, and technology is another piece. So if, if your infrastructure of your of the company, you know, is, mm -hmm. is in, in need of some um, redoing, then from a techno technology standpoint, Taproot can help provide those kinds of services. And I know the project moved along very quickly, um, right? I yes. mean, it just, it was like, was it nine months, six months? I mean, it just felt like it moved very quickly. So the team really works fast. Right, and uh, you know, it's one of those things, uh, you will you will fill the time that you're given, so, uh -huh. Uh, we figured that, you know, we have this much time and we'll get, we'll get it done in that yeah. much time. And I think often if we, you know, you can find yourselves in these sort of strategic projects with overthinking something mm. uh, or having, you know, not, an, you know uh, not enough research or too much research. And I mm -hmm. think the more research you have, the more you, overanal you, make, you could overanalyze. And, you know, we had just the right amount of research and just mm -hmm. the right amount of intuition and... Uh, just the the right number of meetings and conversations to uh, come mm -hmm. to a fairly uh, quick and and hopefully um, strong solution for you and for Beacon to to, to move forward. Well, definitely, for a I think long you time. did. You know, I guess. I'm, and how did you found the quote? Right? Did you, I did. Yeah. And how did you f manage to find that quote? Because it really does fit with I, how we see our families. We talk about resiliency in our families. Mm -hmm. And so, how did you find the quote? I was, you know, I'm a Google geek. I guess, and uh, I'm always looking for. It's some on live TV now, so it's <laughs> official. <laughs> I'm a Google geek, uh, and um, I was just online. I think looking up different um, services for homeless families, mm -hmm. and just looking for. I don't even know what I was looking for. I think it's one of those sort of, mm. you know, moments of of uh, synchronicity where it just was like I started to read this website. Mm -hmm. And I found this quote, and I'm like, oh, wow, you know, 
There's something to that because I we figured that talking about creating a new start wasn't very different, mm-hmm. and what we were looking for was something that really separated and distinguished Beacon from from uh, from other peer organizations. Mm-hmm. Not that you compete against them, but mm-hmm. something that would make Beacon really stand out and, and be different, and really encapsulate the kind of work you do. And and I think mm-hmm. when when we saw this quote and started to think about it. It really became mm-hmm. our, our. I'm going to actually put some pictures of some of the, the folks that we work with on the screen because I think it gives you a sense of, you know, what we're talking about. I mean, it's clearly it's families who have had significant challenges early on in life, whether it's poverty or community violence, um, you know, or just you know academic challenges. Um, and I think you know when we really look at where their beginnings, where you know what they've been faced with. And what we're doing, we are really creating new beginnings for the families. So whether it's giving them new skills uh, that they didn't have beforehand, housing, uh, education, uh, and many times it's just the confidence, you know, helping them find the confidence that they already have. We talk quite extensively about resilience and our belief in our families, you know, and our mothers in particular, that clearly Mm -hmm. they truly, truly want the best for their children. And being able to support them in that effort makes such a difference. And so, yeah, I think that's why it connected so well. We are creating new beginnings uh, for these families, and I love that picture. I just think it's so yes. great. And I think what struck us as well was in, when you look at the statistics of homelessness, you know, homelessness has a, has a new face that I think mm-hmm. many, many people don't really realize, or if they do realize it, don't really want to look at what is a fairly ugly truth. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we started to look at, you know, this, what we call this sort of cycle of disadvantage, mm-hmm. you know, that, that is passed along, you know, almost through generations. And, you know, when we looked at, at where Beacon fit into that cycle, we realized that there was a place where you can break that, where you have mm-hmm. the ability to break that cycle. And I think that was sort of the aha moment for us that, wow, look at, you know, they really, you really do change the course of, of these families' lives in, in such a positive way. And I think, you know, we see that when, uh, when we, you know, very concretely in some of the outcome data that we have. So when we look mm-hmm. at child development based on objective scales and where they are when we, the children, when we start working with them, and then six months later, where are they? And yeah, it, it's true. We, we see either mm-hmm. they remain on track, which is important in what we know the impact of homelessness on children, it does derail their, their development. So the fact that they're on track is important. But also the children who maybe have, we find that have delays in the beginning, you know, they recoup those, you know, they're no longer delayed when we test them six months later. So I think it, it's, it's a, different, again, a different way of looking at it. And it's that kind of research that was so powerful for us to be able to have. You know, um, mm-hmm. and I guess I'm just thinking, what what other what other ideas did you come a- across with when you were looking at our stuff? That was the one. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one. That was it. I mean, there was a lot spinning around in, mm-hmm. in our collective heads, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, we had a, a you know the beginnings of some ideas and, and bits and pieces mm-hmm. of thoughts, but um, you know, we kind of parked them in, in, the, mm-hmm. in the little parking lot because they sure. just weren't. Sure really telling the story in a compelling way and I think you know it's it's about trusting this process of, of st- thinking strategically mm-hmm. I think that that we all uh, bought into that that finally you know got us around to this idea of new endings to disadvantaged beginnings and I think I think it really is sort of trusting the process yeah. and and maybe praying <laughs> <laughs> a, a lot of praying in there I understand yeah. we have a caller there's a question Yes, um, it's fascinating to listen to you um, talk about how good you feel about giving back. I'm just wondering, at the community level, what are some things people out in the community could do for Beacon Therapeutic? Oh, thank you. Good question. Um, well, I don't know if you have any thoughts on it. I mean, I, I can answer as well. Um, I'm put on the spot right I now. Can, give me a I minute. Can, I, can, <laughs> I can answer a few questions. Well, you know, I mean, there's clearly some very specific things. Uh, you know, the agency is always in need of donations. Uh, whether it's gently used items or news item or new items, uh, clearly some of the things that we that we accept in terms of donations is that we are housing families, and as such, uh, we look for things like cleaning supplies and, and lent linens, bed linens, uh, children's items. In particular, right now we are doing a hat and mitten drive, and I will, if I find that that key, I will put it on. But we are doing a hat and mitten drive. Oh, here we go. Uh, for our kids. 
um, because that is something that we've noticed. You know, we, we always run out of hat mittens, uh, and a number of our children really do come from very challenged homes and particularly in our shelter outreach services program. So we are looking for hats and mittens. If you have any that we could pick up or you can donate, you can contact us at 773-298-6441. Uh, as well as that, you know, clearly uh, donations, cash donations are always greatly appreciated. But I, I think, you know, we do look for volunteer opportunities uh, for folks that want to participate. Uh, but it's clearly supporting our mission. We have a number of fundraisers um, and you can check out our website. Um, you know, I'm kind of struggling. I have too many pictures at this point. I will put that up at the end, but um, you know, for other opportunities. But I don't know. Do you have a, any other thoughts? I actually do. While you were talking, something came to mind. You know, we know that about 75 percent of mm -hmm. of all donations come from individuals, and I think maybe we we might think it's corporations and and foundations and and those kinds of organizations, but it's individuals. And you know, as a team, we talked about creating movement for Beacon and the movement being, you know, the idea of one person telling, one person telling one, one other person about Beacon and that person tell, person telling a couple other people and then the word just spreading virally uh, in a way mm -hmm. um, that could really be very powerful. And I think, you know, the more people understand that the face of homelessness has changed and, it, and it's families and that we all come from families. Um, it, it feels like it, it's something that's that's you know worthy of a movement, um, mm. and, and you know, it could be through social media or Facebook or you know all all the new uh, communication technology uh, that everybody is using these days. Uh, it could be that simple. Just becoming more aware of the issue. It's interesting. Yes. I know today HUD released their point in time information. There's a big annual report <clears throat> they that they put out. Uh, in terms of homelessness. And just the quick review, uh, it clearly indicated that veteran homelessness has been reduced, which is wonderful. Mm. Uh, single individual homelessness has been reduced from last year. But families went up. Families went up, right? I believe, by 1.4%. Uh, 1.4 percent, not a huge increase, but it's still an increase. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 38 percent of America's homeless are families, are individuals from families. So I, you know, I go back and I've said this in the past is that I think we have a better handle how to respond <clears throat> to the needs of homeless individuals and clearly homeless veterans. There's a strong effort to, you know, to make sure our veterans aren't homeless. Um, but for families, that's still a population that we're still struggling with. And I'd like to think Beacon is making a difference here in Chicago, you know, by the work that we're doing. But I think overall, that is a new face of homelessness. It's the mm -hmm. children, it's the images I was showing you. And what can we do to make sure that they don't continue on that same trajectory? Well, you know, 38%. So you think about that's, you know, almost 4 in 10. Yeah. People are, you know, part of a homeless family. And, um, yeah, that's huge. That's huge. And then if you look at, um, I think the numbers, it was, it was a quarter of a million, I think. I mean, quarter that's of a, a million. lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. Uh, we have a caller. Yes. Hi, I have a quick question about the families that you serve. Yes. The um, the support that you give everybody individually and as a family unit, do, do those families also have an opportunity to participate in some of the drives that you all are doing? Maybe um, a way for them to give back and to contribute to Beacon as well as taking the services? You know, actually, that's something that we've really struggled with. How do we involve our participants? Um, and, and we do in various ways. Clearly, we look for our participants to take on some leadership roles whenever, you know, they can. So uh, we've had, uh, we look for consumers to be on our board of directors. Uh, but we also realize, and, and there's some other advisory bodies that our consumers are on. Our dilemma many times come is that uh, our families are so overwhelmed with so many things they're trying to do. And to ask them to give up time with their children to come and participate in something else sometimes can be a bit of a burden to them. Uh, but in terms of, they do have an active voice in terms of helping shape some of the programs that we have, as well as um, in terms of, you know, giving us feedback, are the services successful or not? Um, but, in, you know, and we do look for once they're successfully housed and stable, how can they come back maybe and, um, you know, maybe mentor some of our um, some of the, the moms that are stable uh, as well as we have been able to hire some of the participants as peer advocates and that's a powerful way of, of you know ha having them give back and support other families who are in similar situations uh, as as they were once uh, I see it's 455 so we're kind of running out of time uh, Kathy thank you so much for being with me today 
Uh, I'm glad we got some phone calls. Been a uh, pleasure. Thank you. And maybe you'll be on again. Um, <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much. Uh, and we look forward to seeing everyone again next week. Thank you.